Anglo Gold Ashanti presents an attractive value proposition. We're approaching our strategic plans from a position of financial strength, underpinned by a strong balance sheet. As we look to the future, the business is at an exciting inflection point in its growth path. We're investing to grow production by up to 20%, mainly through brownfields options, including Abuasi, followed by our greenfield projects in Colombia. We'll see steadily declining costs over the period as our investments bear fruit. And we'll stay laser focused on converting more of our vast mineral resource endowment into ore reserves. We have a well-defined capital allocation framework focused on making careful investments that provide returns above our cost of capital. Our brownfield and greenfield project pipeline, which is fully self-generated and self-funded, can support our production plans for the long term. And our ESG track record give us the social license to operate in the communities we share around the world. We're also building on a strong climate track record with another big step down in emissions this year and are committed to charting a pathway to net zero. On a five-year outlook, we're expecting an average 5% compound annual growth in our gold production. The primary driver of production growth over the next two years is related to Abuasi operating at steady state, Tropicana reverting to normalized production levels following the current reinvestment in its life extension, and planned production gains from AGA Minerizal, Siguri, and Sunrise Dam. In fact, most of the growth over the period is driven by improvements in our current suite of operating assets, supplemented in the outer years by the Quibradonna and Gramolotti projects. Despite the Gramolotti project final feasibility study being delayed, the company's five-year indicative outlook remains intact. We are planning elevated levels of capital over the next two years, which will facilitate our reinvestment in the existing assets and compliance to tailings legislation. Following completion of these projects, all in sustaining costs, is expected to decline to between $900 to $1,050 an ounce in 2025. Our balance sheet strategy continues to support our capital allocation discipline with adjusted net debt at $908 million, 43% lower than the same quarter last year. The increased adjusted net debt position compared to December 2020 reflects the free cash outflow for the quarter and the $197 million dividends paid in March this year. We remain committed to maintaining a flexible balance sheet with an adjusted net debt to adjusted EBITDA target ratio of one time through the cycle. Our current ratio of 0.37 times is well below that target and the 0.93 times for the corresponding quarter last year. Liquidity remains strong and continues to provide good flexibility in a volatile climate. We had more than $1 billion in cash at the end of March, excluding the Kibali cash lockup. Our liquidity is supported by our $1.4 billion multi-currency revolver. We remain strongly levered both to the gold price and currencies and expect cash flow to benefit from prevailing current market conditions as well as from production and other improvements in our business, particularly through the second half of this year. Let's take a closer look at the Africa operations. The region produced at 352,000 ounces, which was 11,000 ounces more than the first quarter of 2020, at an all-in sustaining cost of $1,140 an ounce. As discussed before, operations across the Africa portfolio are seeing temporary reduction in mining flexibility following depletion last year of the Nyankanga open pit at Gaeta, the depletion of Cat 1 at Idwa Prim, making 2021 a transitional year for the region. In the short term, we have some temporary constraints while we work on establishing the new Nyamalalimo open pit at Gaeta, the new Gaeta Hill underground operation, the new Cut 2 at Idwa Prim and the new Block 2 
open pit at Siguri. The construction of the second phase of the Obawasi redevelopment project was 97% complete at the end of the quarter, having overcome the COVID-related challenges of the past year. The operation is now focused on ramping up phase two uh, to double the production rate. Gold production increased by 50% to 46,000 ounces and the all-in sustaining cost reduced 6% to $1,234 per ounce. Steady state gold production ranges from 350 to 450,000 ounces per annum. At the lower end for the first 10 years, and then at the higher end for the latter 10 years, when the high grade areas of block 10 and 11 are mined. The international operations had its share of challenges during the quarter. COVID-19 had a marked impact on operations in South America. In Brazil, which was the epicenter of the global outbreak for most of the first quarter, we've seen absenteeism anywhere between 200 and 400 a day across the workforce, driven by positive cases, contact tracing and precautionary measures that show flu-like symptoms. We have st strong testing capability and highly evolved and conservative track and trace systems, which is aimed at keeping our people safe, even with the ambient caseload of the country at the levels we've seen. The extended COVID-19 lockdown in Argentina also continued to restrict movement of staff from other provinces, which constrained our ability to mine. In Western Australia, we've seen a series of lockdowns, while the COVID-19 related travel restrictions between the states has resulted in a shortage of skilled uh, operators. During this time, our focus has remained to safeguard the safety and health of our staff, to work closely with the government agencies, provide support to our local communities, and to mitigate the impact on our operations. We recorded the tragic fatality at our Sierra Ground mine in Brazil during the quarter. This was a stark reminder of the need to always keep safety at front of mind and adhere to major hazard control and standards. The incident highlighted the importance of vigilance and visible leadership in the field and need to ensure that everyone at our operations adheres to the major hazard control standards. Given the headwinds we experienced, along with some planned restrictions um, reductions in our production at Tropicana, the international operations coal production for the quarter was 236,000 ounces compared to 270,000 ounces achieved in quarter one 2020. Production is forecast to ramp up during the course of the year as the impact of COVID uh, reduces and higher grade, fight, uh, higher grade feed to the plants is expected. A strong Australian currency resulted in all in sustaining costs being markedly higher than last year at $1,462 per ounce.